Ladies, so today I am going to show you how I created this very cute, beautiful wedding cake with a $30 budget. I will mention the prices for everything and show you step by step how I created this, all right? So of course, every cake video needs the part where you cut a slice, so this is that part, so yeah. All right, let's get started. You're going to need four boxes of cake mix. Any cake mix you like, I am using the Super Moist cake mix. I'm not gonna mention all the brands because none of these people are paying me, okay? But get any brand that you like, all right? And follow the directions on the box of cake mix that you get. The only different thing you're gonna do or add to your cake mix is pudding mix. Um, if it's not a flavor that's chocolate, you can get vanilla for any other flavor, but if it's chocolate, get chocolate pudding mix, okay? Any brand that you like, you can go to Aldi's and get a lot of these ingredients for much cheaper, you know, to make that $30, maybe $20, okay? Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna prepare the first two boxes. So one pack of cake mix per pack of pudding mix. The vanilla pudding is going with the vanilla white cake and the chocolate pudding is going with the devil food chocolate cake mix okay so mix those dry ingredients together first and like i said just follow the directions on the cake mix okay each cake mix required three eggs so i put three eggs in each bowl one of the cake mixes required one and a half cups of water. I believe that is the chocolate one and the white cake required one cup of water. So just follow the directions that's in the back of your cake mix. And like I said, the only thing you're gonna add to that, to that um, cake mix is the pudding, okay? So get chocolate pudding mix for chocolate cakes and vanilla pudding mix for any other flavor of cake. You can mix this um, by hand if you like, or you can use a mixer. I'm using a mixer. I was doing this late at night because, you know, kids and I have a new baby, so she was sleeping. So I had some extra time to get this done, okay? My baby's about two months old, so... You know, I don't have that much free time these days, but I wanted to get this done because I usually bake one of my kids a big birthday cake every year. I do bake them all cakes, but it's just I always around this time bake a big cake for her. So I was like, well, I guess she's getting a wedding cake for her birthday this year. <laughs> all right, so we're going to create a marble cake. And like I said, you can use any flavor you like. You can use a red velvet with a classic white cake mix or vanilla cake mix. You can use white cake mix with like, I guess, carrot cake mix. It's totally up to you. Get creative. But I picked these cake mixes because of the price. They were on sale for a dollar per box. The pudding mix was also on sale for a dollar per box. And I did not include the price of the eggs or the um, vegetable oil in the list of you know the things required to make this cake because I'm assuming you already have eggs at home and you know certain things that you would regularly have cooking oil vegetable oil and eggs so for four boxes of cake mix you're going to need 12 eggs a dozen eggs is about a dollar um, even in Wally world I believe a dozen eggs right now is 98 cents it is 2020, the year of 2020, so I don't know how long this video is going to be up, but right now it's 98 cents for a dozen eggs, okay? Um, if you go to another uh, supermarket, they're 88 cents for a dozen eggs. So once you have both of your cake mixes mixed, um, by the way, I suggest if you're using an um, electric cake mixer like this, do the vanilla first, then work on the chocolate, because I did the chocolate first, and then I had to go wash off the the mixing bits okay and then do the vanilla so do the vanilla first then you can go right into the chocolate it won't make a difference all right so once you have everything mixed you're gonna get your pans ready you can use stick butter you can use non-stick spray I don't judge do what works best for you I know there's a lot of people that judge and all this do what works best for you okay whatever gets your cake out of the pan I have three pans here I have two nine inch pans and I have this smaller six inch pan okay so I'm spraying my pans with a non-stick um, baking spray and I'm going to line them with some parchment paper that I cut 
to just line the bottom so my cakes come out much easier okay even with the cooking spray they'll come out right away but with the paper at the bottom they come out really really nice and have a smooth bottom okay so I'm gonna put in my white or vanilla cake batter in first and I'm gonna try and put even amounts in the first two cake pans if you have a food scale you can definitely use that but I'm just gonna eyeball this and try my best to just get you know even or equal amounts of batter in each pan even the small six inch pan okay try to spread it out just a tiny bit with your um, spatula I know I need a new spatula this one is struggle <laughs> I've had it for a very long time okay I'm gonna get another one I promise um, but yeah try to get even amounts so this is one box of cake mix okay once I'm done baking this first set of cakes I'm gonna go ahead and redo the same process again with the cake mix pudding mix and everything and bake another set of cakes okay so you're only seeing the first two boxes I'm gonna do this again that's why I'm saying four boxes okay so you, you understand me I hope you understand it okay because I don't have six pans you know and I don't want to cut the cakes you know cutting cakes creates more crumbs and, and it's just too messy okay so to avoid cutting the cakes I'm just gonna bake these cakes let them cool down take the cakes out wash the pans or not wash the pans remix more batter and bake cakes again you can use all six cakes if you want to so that means all four of the nine inch cakes and both of the um, six inch cakes but I only use three of the nine inch cakes and two of the six inch cakes because my kids wanted to eat one of the cakes okay the next day so um, yeah I only ended up using three of the nine inch cakes so once you have your white batter or vanilla batter down and you have your chocolate on top of it you can use a fork or a spoon I'm using a butter knife and you're just gonna swirl this together to create that marble effect because I am making a marble cake marble type chocolate vanilla cake okay <laughs> vanilla pudding cake yes that's basically what it is chocolate vanilla pudding cake chocolate vanilla marble pudding cake marble vanilla chocolate pudding cake however you want to say that all right and these cakes definitely taste homemade they don't taste like box cake okay just so you know okay um, but yeah once you have it swirled together you wanna kinda shake the pan just a bit to get it off the sides okay and you can swirl as much as you like but don't overdo it unless you just want to end up with just chocolate um, you know when you swirl it you'll have those different colors in the cake when you slice the cake okay so don't over swirl it if you want to have that effect of the white you know vanilla color and the chocolate brown color okay so we're gonna bake our cakes at 350 degrees for 45 to 47 minutes make sure you have some toothpicks handy so you can check your cake once it's done alright you guys go ahead and check your cakes at 45 minutes to see if they're done if they're not give them two more minutes so it adds up to 47 minutes use your toothpick to you know stick the center of your cakes all the way down if it comes out clean they are done if it's still wet give it the two minutes okay or still moist and sticky and gooey just give it the two minutes so it's technically nighttime while I'm doing this so I'll show you guys how I put these cakes up in the fridge and the way I do it it also helps flatten the cake without um, making it dense okay so I like to stack the cake cakes on top of each other you can use some plastic wrap or you can use um, some parchment paper it's totally up to you whatever you have available um, if you have the cardboards the cake boards around you you can use that as well and put that on top of a cake and then put one cake on top of the other cake do not push the cakes down yourself okay don't actually try to push them down and force pressure onto them okay you just leave it that way and it will naturally slowly flatten the cakes do not push them down yes the cakes are still a bit warm they're not hot but they are warm and again do not push them down okay don't push it or else your cake is going to become 
very dense and you don't want that you want your cake to still be nice and fluffy so this is the next morning this is how they look okay and this is without me applying a whole bunch of pressure you don't want to do that all right you guys so I'm gonna go ahead now that my cakes are cooled down I can use the pans again to make my other two boxes of cake mix so if you're keeping count four boxes of cake mix like I mentioned two boxes of pudding mix your choice okay so I'm gonna mix those do the same thing I did put them in the pans I did not rewash the pans I just sprayed them again and put parchment paper in the bottom and put the batter in there did my little swirl to get my marble effect and pop them back into the oven um, at 350 degrees for 47 minutes so here are all the cakes well I'll have all the cakes but here's the first three cakes that cool down and I want you to see how they look okay with the parchment paper on the bottom I feel like you can handle the cakes a bit better and it gives you a nice smooth top to work with okay And it, guys, if you can't find the cardboard, the round cardboard to put your cake on, um, you can improvise. You can use maybe some flattened um, paper plates and maybe wrap them in some saran wrap, like make a perfect circle, you know, use a good amount of paper plates. Or you can use a regular plate, whatever you got, okay? Um... As far as the frosting, I'm using a cream cheese frosting that I bought at the local uh, general dollar store. <laughs> um, this is the uh, cream cheese frosting flavor and it was on sale for two frostings for $3. So $1.50 each, I bought six. All right, so when you put down your first layer of cake, you're gonna to wanna to put some frosting down, almost like a glue. Then you put your cake down, then you're gonna put your frosting on top of that. Put your other cake, put your frosting on top of that, and then your final cake, okay? Then we're gonna go in and use our spatula to add in um, or add on our frosting. So just take your time. Okay, I'm going to speed this up just a bit, but take your time and, you know, put a good amount on there. It might look like a whole lot, but you're going to scrape most of this off, okay? Not, not scrape it off, but you're going to smooth it out. Let's just say that. And this is basically a crumb coat. It's like the primer for a cake. Just like primer for eyeshadow, this is primer for a cake. It keeps all the crumbs sealed in there once you have your first crumb coat on you're going to want to put your cake in the fridge all right by the way these spatulas can be found in the dollar store as well um there's lots of dollar stores that sell really nice things you know sometimes you might need to drive just a little bit just to find them so as you guys could see i'm just smoothing out the frosting as much as i can whatever is excess you know, I'm kind of pushing it into the cake, okay? And don't worry if it's not super perfect, but try to get the sides smooth, okay? At least even. doesn't have to be 100% covered, okay? It's just primer. Just primer. Now go ahead, put that in the fridge, okay? Put that in the fridge. And I just wanted to show you guys close up. You see, not 100% perfect. I must say this is a very heavy cake you guys so that's going in the fridge I'm going to outline my cake this is not a sharpie it's actually an edible food grade I guess marker that you can use to write on cakes okay and I'm just gonna cut my cardboard down to size because it was too big and I try to keep the hole in the middle so as you guys can see I put some frosting down that's gonna be our glue take the parchment paper off and then place your cake onto your cardboard or if you're using paper plates that you wrapped up in saran wrap do what I just did okay so we're gonna go ahead put our frosting on there and put a good layer on there like a good layer and this is our second cake I'm gonna flip it because the bottom is smoother and put that upside down and then I'm gonna go in and add our first layer of frosting 
I actually used a knife in one part of this video to show you guys you can use a knife to put on frosting so long as it has a really sharp and straight edge okay just try not to cut yourself <laughs> okay if you don't have a spatula like this you can use a knife okay or you can use a, a, a regular spatula not this one and just really really take your time and get it on there really really smooth so this is the first cake out of the fridge and I'm gonna go in and put on my second coat of frosting and I'm still working I think this is my second tub of frosting yes this is my second tub of the cream cheese frosting that I'm using so what was left over from the first one I used on the smaller six inch cake okay and then this is my second one that I opened up so I got the small cake back out of the fridge every time I do a layer I put them back in the fridge and let them firm up you want them to get nice and firm so when you touch the cake you don't end up with frosting on your finger it is you know it get firms up so it doesn't transfer to your finger okay So if you don't have a piping bag, just use a Ziploc bag, okay? Put your frosting in there. You can use a frosting tip like this, or you can just use a spatula. And then you can use a food scraper like this one. You can get it in the dollar store as well. And put your frosting on there. And this will help make you get that nice, smooth, uniform look on your cake, okay? So it's just going to scrape off the excess whatever comes off just put it in the areas where you have gaps okay by the way i'm not a professional cake maker all right because i know some cake maker is going to come like you could have you could have did this you look i just make cakes for my family for my kids for their birthdays and i decided for this birthday to make a wedding cake I did plan on making an affordable wedding cake for you guys, especially now with COVID and people not being able to have the weddings that they want. So they're doing smaller, more intimate weddings. And, you know, a lot of people don't have their jobs anymore or can't afford big weddings. So this is something you can definitely do that will probably be in your budget, you know, for a small, intimate wedding. OK, so I hope you guys do appreciate the effort here. All right. So I decided I wanted to do an ombre look instead of just an all ivory looking cake. So I added some chocolate frosting to the bottom part of the cake and started blending that in. Then I decided to add some more frosting to the top just to get that over with. Okay, just to get that over with. I'm pretty sure the pros do it differently. Pretty sure they do. All right. Oh, here's a tip. Do not put your frosting in the fridge. It gets very hard. Okay, frosting that's already made in those little tubs, it's very hard in the fridge. Okay, so don't put it in there if you know you need to use it on a cake. All right, you guys, so once I have my top layer of frosting on, I'm just going to blend like my life depends on it here, okay? I'm not going to lie, this did take some time to blend this chocolate color in and I got a nice thin layer on there I put that big cake in the fridge then I started working on my small cake did the same exact thing okay did the piping bag put the frosting on and then put the chocolate on the bottom and started to blend till I got a nice transition that I like so as you guys could see like my turntable for this cake is not working like I've had the turn it the whole thing with my hand you see my cake is slanted because the table thing the turntable doesn't work the little bead track that usually is inside the two pieces that makes it easy to turn it around is missing so it's kind of just it's just a stand really okay anyways so use your spatula to help smooth the top of your small cake and you can put this one in the fridge okay you can do the circular design on the top of the cake right away if you want, but I just smoothed it off and I put it in the fridge because it was late, okay? And then that morning, I decided to start working on the big cake. Just want to let you guys know the reason why it took me, you know, two nights basically to make this cake is because I am a mother of four. I just had my fourth baby. She's two months old, you know, some of you guys already know this, so if you're new to the channel, that is why, okay? And I just showed there that I did use a knife, I promise i show you guys that I did use a knife to smooth the cake out as well. So if you don't have a spatula like this, you can use a knife so long as it is straight, just be very, very careful, okay? 
All right, so I'm just gonna make like this like twirly textured design on top of the big cake, and then I'm gonna carefully place my smaller cake in the middle. It could be a little bit off center if you like, if you want more, um, you know, of the bigger cake to have more space in the front for decorations and things like that. If you have any mistakes, just go in with your spatula or a butter knife and fix it up as best as you can. And then on the top, I'm just going to add just a bit more of the cream cheese frosting and just kind of make a, a swirly design on the top. It's a rustic cake. Let's just call it a rustic cake, okay? All right. So now to create that drape effect that you guys saw in the beginning of the video. I'm using fondant that I also got from the dollar store. It was $5 for one box. I would not recommend using this for an entire cake because it does dry out very, very quickly and the texture is almost like elephant skin. Like it just doesn't look good. But for this video, it's fine. It's okay for just, you know, small decoration. I would not put this on an entire cake. By the way, if you're rolling on out fondant, it is very sticky sometimes. So use some cornstarch or confectioner's sugar to keep it from sticking onto your, you know, very clean countertop. So if you're going to do this on your countertop, clean your countertop. Or if you're using a cutting board, you know, I would cover that in foil, then do this so it doesn't stick onto the wood, okay? So you're going to need some shish kebab sticks to create the illusion of like, drapes so this is the part um, of the cake that is draped onto the cake and as you guys could see on the sides of the fondant it's already cracking even though I cut off the first part to make it nice and uniform it started to crack again so I'm just gonna cut this off real quick okay and then once I have my draped shape you know what I mean like it's like gathered together like that I'm going to squeeze the ends and bring it together so it keeps the shape and then quickly put it onto my cake, okay, while it's still warm from coming out the microwave. You do need to microwave this fondant just a tiny bit, just for 20 seconds, just to make it easier to work with before it dries out. You know, it just doesn't look good. So you have to hurry up while it's still warm, you know, so roll it out quick, get it nice and flat, put your shish kebab sticks underneath. You need about four of them underneath and about two or three on top. It, it just depends on how many gathers you want. Okay, so as you guys could see, I'm just gonna drape it onto the cake where I want it to be so I get the top part attached and I kind of let it naturally go into whatever position it wants to fall in and I just lay it down, okay? And I'm pretty much doing the same thing with the second one. So this is after I've rolled it out, I cut off the parts that I don't need and then you just bring it back together to make the gathers. I put the shish kebab sticks underneath it and I put some on top of it. And remember, they have to go in between the spaces on top. Does, does that make sense? I hope it makes sense, okay? So when you put the shish kebab sticks on top, make sure it goes in between the shish kebab sticks that are underneath it. This way it creates those gathered, you know, that textured look like it's fabric draped onto a cake. I'm going to add flowers to this cake. I was going to do those pink flowers that are on the bottom left there. But I changed my mind. I wanted to do white flowers. These are um, synthetic. I was going to say synthetic. These are not real flowers. They're fake flowers. You can use fresh flowers if you want. But that will definitely bump up your budget. But it will make your cake look a lot more high end I feel. Okay. But these are white hydrangeas. Um, I got these from Wally World. I washed them really really well before putting them onto my cake and you know if you want to use real flowers make sure you don't stick the actual stem of the flower into your cake you want to cover that or put a um, toothpick on it before you stick it into your cake all right so you know the added flowers just give it a very wedding vibe and then i'm going to take some of the gold edible paint um, and paint or put some of this in between the folds or the creases of our draped fondant okay to give it kind of like a 3d effect make it a little bit more glam all right so here I'm gonna show you guys how I made those gold feather looking things <laughs> I don't know what else to call them so I boiled some water in a you know in a little saucepan or sauce pot and then I put a stainless steel bowl over that creating like a double boiler situation and then I put about 
a half cup worth of white chocolate morsels or white chocolate chips in there and just you know moved it around with my spatula my spatula my spatula till it melted okay I didn't add anything extra in there and this is not directly on the stove so I boiled the water put the pot on my countertop and then put the bowl on top of the pot so the heat from the pot is warming up the bottom of the bowl and helping to melt the chocolate okay so this is what I use once your chocolate is melted put down a piece of parchment paper that's where you're going to create these feathered out um, shapes of white chocolate um, I want it to kind of look like a like a almost like you know when you tr like a I don't know how to explain it like a big splash yeah a big splash or a feathered out fan of feathers <laughs> Look, it was late and I was trying to get creative here. I actually made these the night I baked the first batch of cakes, but I decided to put this part of the video towards the end of the video to show you guys, you know, how I made this because I think it would have been confusing to keep it towards the beginning of the video, okay? So this was actually made the night that I made the first batch of cakes, okay? So once you have it feathered out, you like your shape, go ahead, use a toothpick or you can cut a shish kebab stick. I had shish kebab sticks, so I cut them and put it in the bottom part, put a bit more of the melted chocolate on top of the stick. This is going to hold it in place. And this way you can easily take it off of the parchment paper and put your gold paint or whatever you have on it and then put it into your cake, okay? So I'm gonna speed up the video and do three more so you guys could see how easy it is to do. I actually like doing this. I like how easy it was to get the shapes that I wanted. So I think in the future I'm gonna get a bit more creative. I feel like I'm gonna get a bit more creative with this chocolate design stuff. Make sure you put this in the fridge so that they can harden up. Then we're gonna paint them. We're gonna, I'm gonna paint them with the edible gold paint and pop them onto the cake. So you see they're not hard to make, not at all. The one thing, I do have a complaint about the edible gold paint because when I was reading the description, it said that it can be used on multiple, you know, edible surfaces and things like that. But it didn't really, oh, like, cover the chocolate feathers as good as I wanted them to. It kind of gave it, like, a wash of gold, which is okay. I'm okay with the wash of gold. But just so you know, it's not going to give you an opaque... Um, you know look of gold paint on your chocolate feather fan fanner fan fan feathers okay so as you guys saw a piece of my chocolate broke off I put some frosting on there and glued it back with frosting we use the frosting as glue I added some more flowers to make this look just a bit more realistic cleaned off the plate that I use for my cake and that is it I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends if you know they're getting married or if you want to surprise them maybe this video can inspire you to make a cake for them especially now that we can't have all these big weddings and probably can't afford them so I hope you guys found the video helpful again if you did give this video a thumbs up comment down below let me know what you think and share don't forget to subscribe love you guys bye